Any questions? Uh, you spoke about high risk group, especially when we are talking about children having smaller brains. Uh, did you include children with fetal alcohol syndrome? No. Mm. No, because li like I explained to you, we were very careful to include people who whose brains had not been altered, mm. who may, may have been altered by the substance use. You know? The issue is, as you have, you probably would have realized, that the problem exists long before these children have touched, have the first drop of alcohol touching their tongue or have they had their first smoke. The alcohol or the drugs in a way are their self medication of their own problem. Because the social systems are failing them, are failing to recognize it. I have one more question. You spoke about uh, children or individuals who have uh, or show propensity towards externalizing behaviors, more prone to yeah. uh, getting uh, uh, getting addicted. Uh, isn't it that uh, individuals who are introverted on the other side of the spectrum, they are equally at risk because socially they kind of are isolated and hence more prone to abuse alcohol? Uh, that was what was believed earlier. Uh, and yes, I mean people who are introverted, uh, who have difficulty in coping with, who are poor coping strategies, do use alcohol and drugs to deal with it. But I am dealing with a particular condition called addiction. You know? uh, and here, more than the introversion, we find the externalizing to be a risk factor. To be honest, uh, the, the introverted people that we do find, have externalizing traits which is uh, people who have more of, uh, see externalizing does not necessarily mean impulsive, I am going to do beat you up uh, etcetera. Externalizing also means difficulty in sustaining interest, in, di uh, in a difficulty in allocating interest. Okay. And sometimes what happens is that, you know, I get so uh, disturbed, because whatever I do, nothing is happening, I know I am good. But Whatever I do, I cannot reach my goals. You know, people who are half as good as me are just going past me and achieving their goals. I am left here like a fool on the hill. Uh, and then you try, you, you withdraw, you do not want to talk to people, you, you become more depressed. So, what we are again finding is that this whole thing of internalizing, externalizing uh, often is not such a rigid boundary as we used to think when you know I started my career. In fact, I, this is something that I have, it was on my list of slides. Uh, one of the things that we are, we are focusing on is increasing resilience in high risk children. How do you do that? You do that at an individual level, that you enhance their cognitive abilities. If I am not able to sustain interest, teach me how to sustain interest. If I am not able to sit at a place and study for 2 hours, teach me how to chunk or break my study uh, thing into half an hour, half an hour, half an hour, half an hour. Right? Uh, teach me how to use my brain, you know, f there is a lot of data on how to use, how the brain learns and knowledge of how the brain learns to learn. For example, do you know that the old style of learning, you know, walking around and uh, is, is a very good way of learning, because as your body moves, parts of your brain which are responsible for uh, coding information hard coding information also works better. So, so, these are some of the things that we try and teach them. For example, we, we are using neurofeedback, getting uh, these young people to, uh, to produce the right kind of brain waves. As you saw, uh, actually I did not present the data here, they have more of the faster brain waves, the beta brain waves, the fast beta brain waves. They are not able to produce the slower, more relaxed brain waves. So, we use biofeedback uh, to, to get them to produce. For example, we get them to play a game, where if only if they produce their alpha uh, waves, that is if they get their brains to relax, can they make a ball stand on a fountain. 
if not the ball falls down you know and it has other uh, applications as well because i'm sure you would have read things where you can use your brain waves to fly a plane and to target missiles but we are not we don't want to do that we want to teach kids to to get more control over their brain we are teaching children how to achieve healthy highs you know i personally don't believe any human being can live without a high but there are harmful highs and there are healthy highs you know and we teach these children to have healthy highs then we are trying to do it at family levels to do active parenting you know there are three kinds of parenting there is an aggressive parenting where you just beat up the kid and get the kid to do whatever you want then there is uh, passive parenting saying at ah, whatever you want you do both worse in this situation active parenting is where you are involved but you also let the child be part of the decision making then we found for example there is another study that we found maintaining family rituals for example i just put it up as an example you know families where there are you know the family meets at the dinner table every day where the family is not one person is with or uh, eating dinner at the tv another person is eating dinner somewhere else uh, you know where families which go out for shopping for example at this you know to the market together these have been found to be protective increase resilience especially in this particular group then of course there is the uh, community level interventions which are uh, effective and what we've been also working on is we've been working on certain medicines which are given to people with adhd and we found that these medicines also help in preventing or at least reducing the impact of drug use in these children so it's not one answer it's it's a it's a number of answers and i won't pretend that i know the answers because this is something that has just happened we are we are in the process of discovery i'm just sharing to you uh, some of the things we've discovered in the last 10 years so i wouldn't be arrogant enough to say i know the answers but i feel that some things work you know we've been working on things like diet where the evidence is very poor for example using omega fatty acids in diet uh, somebody said if you get them to play table tennis or any game like that where they have to concentrate on uh, that works god knows i don't know but the biggest thing is the understanding that there are people who are at higher risk they are at higher risk because of this 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 and there are we need to find out ways and you know i'm glad i'm speaking to you guys because these are design solutions these are engineering solutions these are uh, pharmacological solutions it won't come from one particular group it has to come through a dialogue of different people working on it you know because this is a big big problem this is a huge problem Like all kinds of high risk. Okay, so so if you talk about the education system in a class of 60 students, if there are two, three, four students like this, so there should be something like different classes or something like that for them because as they might be rejected in the whole crowd of people who are normal, but then they have. Some yeah, see, but the, the, that has been worked. No, uh, that is not very useful because you are segregating them. You are saying you are abnormal ghost. these are not abnormal children these are highly uh, intelligent children so you need to integrate them and give them different solutions one of the solutions is cut down the number of people in a class where the teacher can you know uh, look at more individual solutions that is not going to happen in a hurry in india but uh, that is where a lot of the schools are going that you have more teachers to the student ratio because once you do that Uh, you find these children do much better they do very very well uh for example i mean one of the things that i've been discussing with in schools is instead of just giving uh theory that da 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 da, da give it as a project you know people go find out or you are doing some uh, thing in social studies about parliament you go to your local self government you go find out the children are given uh assignments which a lot of you must have done when you were in school we didn't do it we just had to read and uh, memorize 
what we do find is giving projects and I am sure right now in your postgraduate uh, education you are doing projects and you are learning much better because of that. Okay. So, which brings us to this whole new set of uh, thing which is called brain based education and that is very very important because again we are learning, but those are things which need to come back to the classroom as fast as possible. Okay, it is not the wiring which is affected, it is the actually the insulation of the wiring which is affected, it is delayed. You see that wire there, huh? there is an insulation, you see an electrical other the inside is copper wire, no? copper or whatever metal. Now, similarly here in the brain we have normal wiring and on top of that there is a coating. When the brain matures, the part of the brain where the design is complete, you know, suppose you know when what happens when I when I grow up and I start learning how to walk, you know, the brain is kept fluid so that I can learn to walk. When I when I'm born, I don't know how to walk. Unlike unlike a elephant or a giraffe, when they come out, they know whatever they will know for the rest of their life. So their brains are complete. For human beings, we can be in anything, we can be in the tundra as an Eskimo, we can be. So, we have to our brains have to be uh, absolutely uh, flexible and it is kept flexible, so that you can learn. And once you have learnt whatever you need to learn, then the brain says okay, let us close the design, shut the design. That is what you do in your design process, no? that you work, 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 keep it open and then you say okay, done, let us shut the design and the brain's way of shutting the design is by coating it saying okay this is, no more is going to happen here right and at different ages at different stages different parts of the brain get shut you know at one part you learn how to move the motor movements another part you learn how to make judgments another part you learn how to distinguish right from wrong and these happen at different different stages okay these are delayed so, what happens is it is almost as if, the, as if the brain in these kids is saying time is not right, there is too much speech going on, time is not right to close the design, keep it open. But it is a time window, if that time window, there are effective time windows in which you should learn things. If you do not learn how to sing, uh, by the time you are 6, 7, 8, you know, it will be you can still learn it at 35, but it will be very, very difficult. If you have not learnt a third language, by the time you are 10, you are not going to do it. Okay. So, that is what happens in these kids, it gets delayed. Like I told you, these are the kids who are you know pulling things, who are not able to sit in one place who are uh, you know probably learning uh, the nursery rhyme in uh, 2 minutes, when the other kids have learnt it uh, at uh, take 20 minutes to learn. Right? These are the kids, there is no difficulty in learning uh, you know in, in distinguishing. There is usually a slide that I show to uh, school teachers. I do not know whether you have seen, uh, have you read this book called Wind in the Willows, huh? where there is Tigger and uh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. You have seen Winnie the Pooh? Huh? You have seen the figure of Tigger there, the tiger, who all the time jumping, getting into that is it. I just have to show the picture to those teachers and say, ah, this child, that child, that child, it comes out. Okay. So, it is not difficult, because these are kids you know, these are kids I know, these are kids we have, some of us have been and also continue to be as adults because this continues in adulthood. But as I said, the solution is not just recognizing, the solution is putting in interventions and the interventions are from different fields. Like 
not a uh, yeah. One is you need to talk. You need to talk. You need to. I told you something. You need to go out and tell somebody that. We all need to talk. We all need to create this awareness. And of course, hopefully, more and more of this evidence will come, and more and more people will know. Like I said, the best way is to tell other young people. The old people like us are not going to learn anything new. So, target the young people. Okay, that is where change has to happen, that is where change will come. Okay. And there is a lot of information you know coming out. For example, the other day I was reading this story about uh, in Kenya, they did this wonderful study. They looked at a, at a tribe who about a hundred years back, half the tribe, they were hunter gatherers, hunting in the savanna. Half the tribe came and settled down in, in, in villages and all that, started doing agriculture. And then they found that the same group of people, that I was talking to you about, in the hunter gatherer society were the heroes, because they would find out where the antelope was, they would find out where the best grazing uh, you know fields were they were the heroes. So, same, same guys you know with the same genes in the agrarian society were the zeros, they were stealing, they were getting into trouble, they were getting drunk and disorderly beating people up. You know. So, in a way it is fascinating that the same thing in different social circumstances you know flowers as, as a different flower, the same seed. You know. So, who is wrong? Is the seed wrong or the environment wrong? You know, in the morning, I met a group of people who were studying about adjustment, and all of us have to adjust to our circumstances. So, sometimes the circumstances are like that, they throttle you, but we still have to learn how to adjust to them well. But there are some people who adjust better, some people who do not adjust better. And up till now, we have said what to do, people who do not adjust will just sink and die or go to prison. The time has come to change this and say that okay, our worlds are going to get even more complicated, are going to get even more fr uh, frustrating and suffocating. You know. So, are more and more of you young people going to just suffocate and die? Is that right? Should not we recognize that most people have lots of talent and let that flower in whatever circumstance human beings i mean your next generation will be living in mars so how will you guys adjust how will they adjust so what we hope is that you will use this information to bring about changes in human societies sir but uh, even if Just ask him when he does horse riding and bungee jumping, does he still drink and smoke? No. Ah, see that is the whole thing. <laughs> see you, you, you yes, yourself have brought up the solution. But uh, then he gets the urge to smoke later on. Fine, fine. I mean, see, if you stop treating it as a moral problem, bad. You use the word bad. You know, what is bad? Why is it bad? Health, health-wise, yes, it is yeah. not good. That is not the way we look at it. The way we deal with it is bad, bad boy, do not come near, go. That does not help, that does not help him, because as you probably would have realized that he is a very bright, better than uh, average uh, person. Right. So, next time you go, realize that he is using it to, to control him, you know, whatever, to normalize his functioning. And if he is given great good enough challenges, he would not need that. You know, it is not automatically going to, uh, he has got used to it. So, he will have to find a high which you know takes care of it, he will also have to deal with it. There are ways and means to deal with it. 
But if he does not have an alternative and he only has this, he will come keep coming back to this. But as you rightly said, when he goes horse riding, he does not do it. When he is out saving the world, he does not do it, is not it? Steve Jobs did not need ganja, he had uh, apple to take care of. So, in a way it is about finding that, that project, that great dream on the hill, which all of us have to do all of us, you know, because in, an, in, in a certain, you guys have reached IIT, you cannot be, uh, you know, dumb uh, fools and to a great extent, you will also be those kids who have you know, little bit of this, because you also have, you know, you have reached here, because you have some level of genius, you know, and the other side of genius is this restlessness inability to sit there, get bored easily, you know. So, you also carry great dangers on your shoulders. I do not mean you personally, but all of you, because none of you have reached this place without being slightly abnormal and I mean it in a good sense. Very good question. First answer to that is I do not know, uh, because there are tests for people who fall very clearly on this side of the bell curve. Okay. But these kids that we are talking about, a lot of them do not are not diagnosable disorders. You know. I strongly suspect that I had ADHD as a, as, as a child, not ADHD diagno diagnosable, but you know, as my friends will tell me, ki, are yaar khada ke baat kar. Why are you all the time moving around? You know, I find it difficult to stop my second thought coming before my first thought is finished. Okay. I would never have, I was, I, was a, I was the quintessential good boy. I would never have satisfied criteria for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. But throughout my life, I have seen that there are ways, you know, halfway through a project, the second project would have entered my mind and it has been difficult. So, it is not, you are right, it is, it is, I do not know, the answer to that is I do not know, how does one catch hold of this thing. I think that the message should go out is that this is not a problem, this is actually latent genius, then we will catch, catch it more. If we, if we, if we send out the message, that this is not a problem, but this is something to, to encourage the other part of the coin then we will probably get the message through. Then mothers will say, Are, yaar, this is something to look forward to. So, we will give more positive influences and positive influences will help the children who need it, will help the children who do not need it. You know? Exactly, exactly. No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. You are very good question, nothing. You know, tomorrow I am going to talk about behavioral addictions, which include things like workaholism. You know, there are seven of the IT billionaires in this country who I think have fallen into this category. None of them touches, I mean, none of them have problems with drug and alcohol but they have problems in, in their workplace. They are riding roughshod over people, they do not come home to eat uh, dinner, they are least bothered about what their children are doing, they are so concentrated on the work, but they have created 
major uh, resources for this country. So, there is no black and white dimension, you are, you are absolutely right. This is not just about drug and alcohol. I got involved in it, because I work in the, this area and my research took me from this area. So, what I am you know, talking to you about is research from this particular area, but what we are real, realizing now is it is not just about this particular group, it is about a huge proportion of humanity. It is generally, what I told you was not about alcohol, what I told you was a story about how brains work. And sometimes, work in different ways. Now, the nods are saying, please let us out. Uh, can I ask? Sure, please. Uh, if uh, no, somebody is vulnerable to uh, sustain from a policy point of view, uh, should the quantum of punishment not be different for? Uh, ah, yes, 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 yes. This is this is this whole. Because right now, Indian federal court never thinks of uh, no these issues, but this should come into picture. Yeah, uh, that is a much more difficult question. The question that is being answered today, and you know, in in the courts of India, in this whole review that happened about the juvenile justice uh, thing is whether children who are 17 years old should get, because of the crime that they have committed is so serious, whether sh they should be judged as adults. That is a bigger question I, to my mind. And as a, as a neurobiologist, I find it difficult to say that a 17 year old brain, whatever the crime should be judged as a 35 year old brain, because a 17 year old brain is still trainable, you know a 17 year old brain is still plastic, it can be molded, a 35 year old brain is not. So, if you say a 35 year old brain is become such a bad criminal that you cannot do anything other than you know put him in jail for life, do not agree, but still understandable. But if you tell me a 17 year old is without help and the brain cannot change any longer treat him like the 35 year old and put him in jail for life i don't agree i i vehemently don't agree you know the bigger question which is now being entertained in the courts of the us is whether people with this kind of a you know brain dimension require to be seen differently that's a bigger uh, question and the, the courts in the US are saying that, that they are not as culpable as people who do not have this issue. Uh, it is a difficult ethical question, you know, but as far as you know the criminality of a 17 year old brain and the 35 year old brain, I am firmly on the side of the 17 year old. It is a, it's a very, very, very difficult ethical question and after this Delhi incident is, is a very topical question.